Welcome back to the show. Always a pleasure to see our next guest, and uh, he's a pretty consistently busy guy. You know, what with running the city and all. You know, so. and there's you know. an election coming up in November. I did not know that. We're chatting with Mayor Gregor Robertson. How are you? Hey, Gregor, I'm how good. Are you? I didn't I'm know good. it was election time already. The three November. year. That's right. It's coming November nineteenth. So uh, probably the first important thing that people would like to know is what are you doing about the weather? <laughs> what are you going to do to make our summer better, Gregor Robertson? <laughs> The weather is a federal issue. <laughs> Good answer. <laughs> Just pass the buck as you go, as you Environment go. Environment Canada, you, you know, I, it's been a little challenging. Eh? Everyone's kind of yeah, grumpy about the weather and uh, hoping it changes. But. What I've liked that you sort of played into as well is, uh, you know, we haven't had the greatest summer weather, but when you look around the city and all the stuff that's been going on, the car-free days, the stuff in Stanley Park, all these things that were sort of uh, one of your focus when you came in to really liven the city up have been going smashingly well. Yeah. How much fun true. has this been for you to watch how people have reacted to this idea and the it's concept? It's been fantastic. It's, even with the weather as it is, we've uh, had huge turnouts. For, I think parades and festivals and celebrations are all running at record levels this yeah. year. So really showing people want to be outside celebrating, want to be uh, building community like that. and. That's encouraging. It's encouraging and to see it. Ourselves. Right, so we won't let a little rain deter us uh, from having some fun. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> what about a lot of rain? Does that deter well, us? Well, you know what? I'm trying to look on the bright side. Uh, so many things we got to talk about, and I think what's probably on top of most people's mind right now is because uh, it's just back in the news cycle is uh, the fallout from uh, uh, the Stanley Cup uh, right. riots. Uh, what's going on from your perspective right now? The police are starting to move forward on everything? Well, basically, we have a couple of reviews taking place. We have an independent review that the city, the province, and the police board are conducting, and that's chaired by John Furlong and uh, a guy named Doug Keefe, from, uh, no, uh, Deputy Justice Minister from uh, the East Coast. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And they will report back at the end of August. Where that's the independent review that looks at the overall situation, what were the plans, what happened, what was the role of alcohol? What do we learn from this? There's also in, there's reviews taking place within the city, the police, and the fire department as well to look at how all the operations worked and uh, and uh, what we can do better next time. And it's time. all so important for us to move forward because we do want to continue having things. We've got the fireworks coming up. Exactly. Uh, and we want to look on the bright side of being mm -hmm. able to have huge events here in Vancouver and not let one event set back the clock of things. So how are you looking forward to having uh, the big events and how have the riots changed your perspective on how we're going to handle them? Well, we still have a lot of big events on our calendar and as you say, we, we are going to steam forward with that and, and make them the best they can be. Uh, adjusting, uh, given the circumstances during the riot, the police will adjust their game plan a bit for the fireworks. Yeah. I think there'll be less tolerance of alcohol on the street for sure because uh, it was a big factor in the riots, we all know that. Um, basically, we, we want to take the learnings from these reviews and apply them to the celebrations going forward because yeah. we, we expect uh, we expect to have the Stanley Cup back in town yeah, and man. to win it next time. <laughs> like, way to look I on like the bright side. I like the way that sounds. Uh, and the interesting thing was the way social media uh, was so helpful this, yeah. during this because, you know, it's a great time waster and it's lots of fun, but it was nice to see that it can actually be used uh, in the way that the Vancouver Police Department use it to identify people. Right. How is that part of things moving forward? Because, of course, the Vancouver Police department were inundated with uh, you know opening the email address so people could identify people how has that affected the outcome of uh, people turning themselves in or people being identified well it's definitely on a massive amount of evidence and, and information that's been provided to police there's about 50 investigators now working with all that information and working towards recommending all the charges so uh, you know the ex expectation is hundreds of people will be arrested and will be uh, held to account for what they've done, the crimes they've committed. Yeah. And social media kind of cuts both ways because, uh, you know, there there were definitely challenges when yeah. it was happening. Vigilantism what was happening. isn't good in any way, yeah. shape, or form. It yeah. doesn't matter. And beforehand, was did it play a role in helping people organize, the, yeah. the people that instigated the riot? So uh, it cuts both ways. It's it's now mm. a big factor in, in everything that yeah. we do. and and not as well understood and the implications of it, uh, the role that it plays in large events. Uh, but there's also lots of positives yeah. that come from it too. It's an interesting glimpse into it. You know, I remember watching you uh, on the news when you made your first statement and, and what I thought more than anything is, He's mad. <laughs> like, you looked really upset. Yeah. I mean, as a person, and, and forget about being mayor or everything else, I, th I, th I think there was a real expression that, that a lot of people were feeling at that point. You were just kind of kind of choked as I a person. Was, yeah, I was, yeah. It was, uh, it, well, just extreme, it was disgusting to see what was happening. Yeah. And we had so much amazing emotion, you know, such great feelings as the Canucks got to game seven in the final. 
and to have it all dashed on uh, yeah. uh, you know, a smaller group of people that instigated it and then see tons of people get involved and bah, just lose their bah, heads. Just the <laughs> yeah. sheep, right? You know, it was crazy. really, yeah, it was, yeah. Dis it was so dis disappointing to see that. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it's the human condition. We, we've got to figure out uh, yeah. how it happened and, and make, make sure it doesn't happen again like that. Let's move on to some uh, interesting things that, that uh, the city's a huge part of right now. Uh, affordable housing, social housing, uh, you know, another thing that, that really for you uh, was something that you were very focused on uh, when you were running for office and now uh, as a mayor as well. What's going on with all that and, and what kind of programs are in place? So we, we're just putting out our uh, homelessness and affordable housing strategic plan for the coming years. We've really focused on helping people off the street the last couple of years and seen a huge drop in street homelessness, yeah. down 82% over amazing. the last that couple of years. 82%? So, yeah, That's amazing. Yeah. It's a big drop. And, and last year, over the past year, our overall number of homelessness went down for the first time in a decade. So yeah. it's, we're turning the corner here. Now we've got to focus on affordable housing, uh, more types of housing, making sure that uh, mental health is primary on the streets, the care for people with mental health illnesses uh, and it's really following through on on these initial steps to turn the tide yeah. and affordable housing is is a big issue in our city not just you know for the poorest and, and most vulnerable people middle but class, people everything. Yeah. middle the class yeah. Yeah. yeah so I that's where I see these next couple of years we've we have got to figure out how we get more affordable housing and rental housing where do you built. look for for the cues on what to do I mean are there cities that are that are making positive change yeah. and, and and being able to do this in, in large well it's a struggle everywhere it's a, it, this is a, a challenge for all big cities cities around the world right now and Vancouver because of the price of land the value and the, and the, the limitations we have in our land here uh, it, it adds an extra cost mm -hmm. so yeah. we have to be more creative basically we got to look at different types of partnerships public and private how we liberate land that's not being used yeah. well and laneway and housing has been laneway growing. housing I've seen so space. many houses in my neighborhood now and they when, look they're, good too. Yeah. when they're building and that's they're good. incorporating laneway houses and they look beautiful yeah. <laughs> it's a great addition it's and it, it doesn't necessarily disrupt the character of a neighborhood. Yeah. We can still have these kind of single family home neighborhoods that are uh, lush and green and, and yeah. at the same time we can add a lot more affordable housing into the mix. And another thing that we've been hearing about uh, lately are a lot of pedestrian accidents on the streets right. and yeah. uh, pedestrian safety is going to be becoming uh, a big focus as well. Maybe you can touch on that a little bit for us. Yeah, we do have a, a pedestrian safety plan coming to council uh, next week. And we've, the, there's a couple of pieces here. One is getting uh, the next phase of safety on, on crossings. Countdown timers, you've probably seen some of these at intersections that yeah. count down how many seconds you have to get across. I always wait till three. To, and then Michael <laughs> Eckford. Yeah. Time yourself. Yeah. A, how fast can I make it? Yeah. Well, it's, it's, uh, it's key that we get those in place in the 10 most dangerous intersections right now. Yeah. We really target where the problems are, where people are getting hurt or killed and we address those and then looking overall at the whole city and and how we improve continue to improve it's it's actually a lot safer than it was years ago mm -hmm. yeah. we used to lose dozens and dozens of people a year yeah, on right. our Are streets people getting more tickets for jaywalking and the like or is that well the the jaywalking enforcement isn't uh, a priority within the plan right now it's more making sure that we have the crossings uh, better marked yeah. that we have uh, we have speed uh, flashers on the the strip some of the Remind pieces, people 30, how fast they're going. Yeah. yeah, so this is how fast you're going, by the way. And, uh, and then we step up that enforcement where people are speeding and really uh, focusing on the, the car, bike, and pedestrian yeah. interface because you know, there's was a lot say, of conflict. Because you're really, especially in downtown core, people are having to learn different habits now uh, because bike lanes are a reality. As a cyclist, I love them. They give you a sense of safety uh, and, and they give you a place, right, that, that's defined. But, but you realize that there's cascading effects from all these things, and people really have to adjust their behavior from all aspects, pedestrians, cyclists, cars, everything. That's, and that's right, that's right. That's a big job to ask people to sort of change. It's, uh, it is, and, and there's obviously some tension with that between all the types of transportation <laughs> that we, that we want to minimize, and that's getting used to proper separation. Mm -hmm. So the bikes aren't on the sidewalk, and yeah. the bikes aren't mixed in with the cars, the cars aren't on the sidewalk, <laughs> pedestrians That's aren't a bad thing. running out in Cars time. aren't on fire, you know, yeah. people, there's a lot We've of things. We've solved that. Yeah. Yeah. No more. Gregor, but it is you. about keeping them, uh, giving them their own space and making sure people respect each other ultimately. That's that's the key piece. Perfect. Well, thank you so much, Gregory. If you have any questions for the mayor, you can actually email him. We've got the email uh, address on the screen for you right now. Very nice. Yeah, enjoy your summer, and uh, apparently you have a busy fall. <laughs>
coming up for you. <laughs> we do. Best Thanks. of luck. Thanks Thank so much you. for joining us. We're going to take a break. When we come back.